Galapagos, a mystical island world located in the middle of the Pacific and shrouded in legend. It is home to one of our planet's most extraordinary creatures, the marine iguana. These lizards have evolved a novel lifestyle just to survive. They live both on land and underwater. They fight with the same spirit as they cuddle. They appear prehistoric, yet are full of high tech. Their unique way of life has worked for millions of years. But now, Mysterious changes have taken place. As if by magic, more and more of them simply disappear. There's a way to make an entrance. This is my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Marine iguanas are very strange creatures. They can do something other lizards can't. They dive. When their ancestors came here millions of years ago, they were herbivores that lived exclusively on land. The best source of plant life here on the barren volcanic islands was underwater. Algae. This is what they learned to swim for, and even how to dive. They adapted to the new world underwater and became the reptiles of the ocean. They can hold their breath for at least 20 minutes. No human, including top athletes, is capable of this. Even more astonishing, marine iguanas are, like snakes, cold-blooded animals. So how do they manage to survive for so long in icy cold water? Marine iguanas have one thing in common with all reptiles. They need the sun to reach operating temperature. The iguanas' ancestors had much lighter skin. Today, they are just as dark as lava. Each individual skin scale is rather like a solar cell. This accelerates warming up. Aligned with the sun for turbo recharging. No one can be quite close enough. In actual fact, Marine iguanas are very sociable and are anything but shy whilst warming up. Equipped with all of these tricks, the reptiles manage to survive their long dives in cold water. These conditions illustrate just how unbelievable their adaptability is.
underwater, one is often reminded of a washing machine. The marine iguana has no choice. It has to eat. It's almost impossible to find support anywhere in the currents. But it manages with the help of its enormous claws. Every moment underwater, causes the iguana's body temperature to drop rapidly. Even the strongest must give up at some point. But the fight against the surf is not over yet. Whatever Mother Earth demanded of them throughout the course of millions of years, the marine iguanas passed all the tests. They are real superheroes. But the story of these animals has begun to change in recent times. Where once thousands of them presided, is today a completely different picture. In the past 15 years alone, the marine iguana population has decreased by several hundred thousand animals. The mystery of their disappearance is like a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. The location of the remote island world is of particular significance. Galapagos lies some thousand kilometers off the South American coast, almost exactly on the equator. The island group comprises 13 main islands and hundreds of smaller rocks and isles. A rugged land created from the embers of the earth. To this day, one of the most active volcanic regions of our planet. In reality, nothing should be able to exist here. But Mother Nature had other plans. As if by coincidence, currents and winds transported animals here across the sea. Over millions of years of natural selection, weird creatures evolved from those that survived. Turtles with snake-like necks. Birds that can't fly. And penguins became tropical inhabitants. The animals lived here like on an ark in the ocean, undiscovered and unknown for thousands of years. But one man's visit changed all of this. When natural scientist Charles Darwin visited the islands in 1835, his observations led to a new theory 
on how species originate. The young researcher recognized that the difficult conditions on these islands drove the evolution of its inhabitants in a special way. Darwin was convinced that the scarcity of food on the volcanic islands once forced the lizards to become sea dwellers. He would definitely have liked to examine why they are now disappearing. Whole generations of young biologists walk in Darwin's footsteps. One of them is German marine biologist Max Hirschfeld. Together with international colleagues, he attempts to discover the secret behind the strange disappearing act. The team of biologists and vets undertake comprehensive investigations on the lizards. Thirty-two-two on this one. Gotcha. Are the mini dinosaurs ill? Can they no longer propagate? Could they have been poisoned? Or are none of these presumptions valid? The scientists have to consider all of the possibilities. But analysis of their data can take quite some time. Do the marine iguanas have so much time left? Or is their fate already sealed? The pressure on the scientists is enormous. Do they have any chance of saving the mini dinosaurs? Whatever the cause for their disappearance, the problem has to lie in the present day. After all, the marine iguanas have survived for millions of years. One of the more recent species on the island is mankind. Tourism is booming, and for good reason. Nothing but nature, even on arrival. Culture lovers and city travelers are nowhere to be found. People come to Galapagos to see animals. Hardly any other place on this earth offers the possibility to observe and come face to face with so many exotic animals. Iguanas also seem to have no problem with the close proximity to humans. But to which cost? 
Since 1980, the visitor count has risen from 10,000 to 200,000, 20 times more. Within the same time frame, the marine iguana population has been sinking rapidly. Is there a direct connection here? Could tourism be the cause of the marine iguana's demise? Does the closeness to humans cause them stress, or do the visitors transmit diseases to the animals? Why is it that iguanas allow humans to get so close to them? To find out, let us first observe the iguana's neighbors. Galapagos cormorants once had completely normal wings. In the course of thousands of years, they became ever smaller until very little remained. Even if they wanted to, they would not be able to fly with them, and worse still, nor escape. But why should a bird lose its ability to fly? For thousands of years, the cormorants had no natural enemies on Galapagos. Quite frankly, there is simply no one they should have to flee. And as the food they need is on their own doorstep, flying simply became surplus to requirements. It just became more important to be able to hunt underwater than to fly. To be able to reduce water resistance, they simply minimized their wings. And to increase acceleration, the leg muscles were continuously strengthened. No other cormorants dive as deep and as long as the Galapagos variety. They lost their ability to fly, but in doing so, became professional divers. And because they never had any enemies, they not only lost the ability to flee, they also forfeited the instinct to do so. Just like the cormorant, the marine iguana knows no fear, neither of other animals nor of human beings. But cormorants and iguanas are not alone in this. Giant tortoises also hardly appear as if they feel irritated by the presence of humans. We could even stroke them. But this is fortunately prohibited. One thing is certain. We need strict rules for the animal's protection. And these are in place on the Galapagos Islands. It is prohibited to leave marked paths. Tourist groups can only visit when accompanied by a park ranger. And no one may approach the animals within two meters. Tourist behavior is so closely monitored that they pose little or no threat to the welfare of the animals. And yet another fact supports the thesis 
the tourists are not the guilty party. A large area of the Galapagos Islands has been declared inaccessible to visitors, and where there are no humans, the marine iguanas also disappear. Max Hirschfeld and his colleagues are continually faced with many unanswered questions. The blood test results have been analyzed, but they reveal no indications of epidemics or diseases transmitted by humans. The animals appear to be in the best of health. If diseases are not the cause, what could then be the reason for the disappearance of the animals? One hot lead takes us to the coastal town of Puerto Villamil. The small township boasts 2,000 inhabitants and is located on the island of Isabella. Here, Nature and animals merge with city life. The borders are in flux. Of all places, here in the direct vicinity of humans, one of Max Hirschfeld's colleagues made a sensational discovery. Directly beneath the observation tower El Mirador, biologist Catherine Tosny finds the ostensibly impossible. A marine iguana colony that is continuously expanding. How can this be when the number of animals in the other colonies continues to decrease? Examinations elsewhere on the island of Isabella revealed that the death rate of the marine iguana babies stood at up to 90%. The only exception, the marine iguana colony in Puerto Villamil. And stranger still, more and more animals are arriving at the coastal location. Pregnant females walk huge distances to lay their eggs here. Catherine immediately understands the importance of the small town beach below the watchtower. She requests a fence from Galapagos Park and the city to prevent the lizard's eggs from damage by humans. But the considerable appeal of the area also has its disadvantages. The marine iguana paradise is small. The best spots are heavily fought for. The nesting places in the sand are an important factor, but they cannot be the only reason why the area is so successful. Similar sandy surfaces can be found in the other colonies of the island.
Catherine switches her observations to the marine iguana babies. After hatching, the young have to find their own food, despite not yet being able to swim. This is why flat stones, overgrown with algae that are uncovered at low tide, are ideal. There are few waves that could endanger non-swimmers. But Catherine is certain that this is also not the reason. Other nesting places also have good grazing grounds for the young. So, just what is the secret of this place? What is Puerto Villamil's X Factor? Perhaps the answer cannot be found in Puerto Villamil, rather outside in the remote wildernesses of the islands. Perhaps a hitherto undiscovered hunter is lurking here somewhere. And it is this question that National Park Ranger Christian Sevilla wants answering. While scouring through the island world, he realizes that there is just one animal that could prove dangerous to marine iguanas. The Galapagos hawk is the island's largest bird of prey. It normally eats insects, small rodents and birds. Has it recently also begun to cast its eye on marine iguanas? The reptiles are obviously unaware of the danger. hawk needs only to make its choice. Is this bird of prey responsible for the demise of the iguanas? Have the hawks changed their prey preferences? Or have they become so plentiful that they simply gobble down iguanas at will? A glance back into the past actually does reveal significant changes. In the past century, one could still find large wild goat herds in many of the stone valleys. Hawks were verifiably responsible for the killing of their offspring. But the bird's search for goats is now a futile endeavor. They were classed as a threat to the ecological system and wiped out. After many weeks of observation, it became clear that the hawk does grab the odd lizard or two. But after the eradication of the goat, it hasn't yet thought of specializing in iguanas. This proves, at least, that hawks are not responsible for the alarming disappearance of the iguanas. This lead is just another dead end. Biologist Catherine Tosney, on the other hand, is one step further. She makes disturbing observations in a marine iguana colony well away from Puerto Villamil. On several occasions, 
she witnessed how wild cats simply killed the babies. Even though feral cats are timid and rarely seen, Catherine assumes that hundreds of them go hunting for the marine iguanas. In Puerto Villamil, however, the numbers of iguana babies steadily increases, despite the vicinity of humans and their domestic animals. But what is so different here? After years of detective work, Catherine has discovered why the colony here is so successful. The decisive difference is this crevice in the shadow of the observation tower. Catherine noticed that the babies find shelter here. The young animals are only safe from the water-shy cats when they hide in the crevices, narrow and partly submerged fissures. As unbelievable as it may sound, a refuge such as this is nowhere to be found in other nesting places. The babies were safe for thousands of years until humans arrived and with them, the cats. But the problem will not be entirely resolved by simply exterminating the wildcats. As recent examinations prove, the marine iguanas are also disappearing from the islands on which there are no cats at all. Not tourism, nor introduced species such as the domestic cat could be considered as the reasons behind the disappearance of the marine iguanas. Not even predators pose a serious threat to them. So, what is the problem? The disappearance of the iguanas could be connected with the changes in the sea. Oceanologist Dr. Luis Vinueza suspects that this could be the case. He has been researching the sea and algae growth off Galapagos for years. He observed how the sea abruptly changes at regular intervals. The otherwise green algae garden has become a desert. Of all things, the green algae, the iguana's most important source of food, has simply disappeared. How can this be? Several major ocean currents meet at Galapagos, including the especially cold and nutritious Humboldt Current. Thanks to which, algae grows at all here at the equator. As they prefer cool, nutritious water. And most fish here love algae. It is due to them that life in this plentitude is at all possible. But every few years, this food chain collapses. The underwater world changes into a desert. Rocks have taken over where once there were meadows of green algae. The animals search desperately for the last traces of food. 
including the marine iguanas. There is hardly anything edible on the barren rocks. Are the iguanas dying of starvation? Luis Vinueza finds predominantly brown algae. Are they the answer to the problem? Max Hirschfeld's colleague, Natalie Guevara, discovered that some algae are actually toxic for animals. The marine iguanas eat them when there are no more green algae, a fatal error, as they cannot digest them. This would also explain why the scientists often found so many undigested algae in dead iguanas. They eat the poisonous algae due to famine and die with their stomachs full. The death of the lizards seems to be connected with the periodically appearing changes in the ocean. But just what causes this change? Normally, the trade winds blow from east to west across the Pacific. In doing so, they drive the warm equatorial water in a westerly direction. The Humboldt current brings cold, nutrient-rich water to Galapagos from Antarctica in the south. But every few years, the weather phenomenon with the name El Nino occurs. The trade winds slacken. Extremely warm water returns. It acts like a poisonous carpet on the seabed off Galapagos and obliterates almost all living organisms. But this weather phenomenon is hardly new. It has been occurring regularly now for millions of years. The marine iguanas are certainly used to the fact that El Nino pays a visit every few years. They have developed strategies with which to survive this weather phenomenon. In times of need, they minimize their muscles and fat reserves. But that's not all. Marine iguanas can shrink. They are the only animals in the world that can decrease their own bones. The marine iguanas don't just become thinner, they get shorter too. Thus, they use less energy and can survive the long periods of forced fasting during the El Nino days. Yet still their numbers are in decline. Why? It's not the weather phenomenon per se that causes the marine iguana such problems. It's the frequency and intensity of it. Apart from the normal El Ninos, there are the similarly frequent super El Ninos. These are so violent that nature completely loses its balance. Until just recently, such grave events were extremely rare, but this has dramatically changed. The intervals between the violent El Ninos are becoming increasingly shorter. Many scientists have agreed on blaming global warming as the culprit. It is this that led to the dramatic mass fatalities.
the regeneration period between the weather extremes is becoming shorter. It is impossible for the marine iguanas to propagate in such short periods. During a super El Nino, between 70 and 90% of all animals lose their lives. No species can overcome this in the long term. The marine iguanas on Galapagos are the best example of the far-reaching consequences of our actions. Tourism cannot be prevented, but can be shaped so as to have little impact on nature. Simple measures can make a big difference to be able to ensure the reproductive success of the animals. The efforts and regular monitoring by committed scientists from all over the world supply an important contribution to the preservation of the species. But the cause of the large-scale mass dying is exclusively down to climate change. The mystery surrounding the deaths of the marine iguanas has been solved. But this doesn't leave much room for hope. These unique animals only have a future when mankind finds a way to stop global warming within the next few decades. For centuries, Galapagos was one of the last paradises in the middle of the Pacific. Despite major efforts to preserve this natural wonder, climate change remains a threat. Once, the polar bear was synonymous with the consequences of global warming. In recent years, ever more animals have been added to the list. One of these is now, without doubt, the marine iguana.